Welcome to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games and talk game design, and we are back with more Vagrant Story for the fourth time. You know, you ended the last episode with a weird face, and now it's started this one. It's only appropriate that it began that way. <laughs> it's like the day never changed. Moving forward! So, what's up with the, like, green, half green, half gray icon with of him in the left? Well, now it's gone, but... Is that like your health? Your current health? Oh, okay, so you're talking about my body? Ah, yeah. where did you come from? Down in the lower left. Ah. All right, so, um, as remember how you're able to hit body parts? Yeah, So I'm showing you the health of your body parts? Yep. So you're, you're, you're better you're, when your body parts are gray? Blue. Oh, that's it's blue. blue into green into yellow red, I think, and then dead. Was dead, just like black. The body part is, yeah, it's gone. like really dark red or black oh, okay. or whatever. And uh, at that point, that's when you start experiencing the, those difficulties. Now, mm -hmm. what I don't like is that when you attack your enemies, only the legs matter for them because they'll see the reduced movement speed. But apparently, enemies are not affected by any of the other things. Really? Yes. Like they, so like they don't they won't go silence if you hit them in the head they won't go I'm I'm just screwing around uh they won't uh you know like oh there's a trap there thanks tutorial <laughs> was there any way you could have detected that mm, if I had magic which I don't yet <gasps> there's hmm. magic <laughs> so I'm gonna use this cure root because the game taught me what a cure root is I know this is something that's really common in roguelikes but like. Do you think that's fair to just like have a trap there that the player will probably hit? Do you think it's okay because it's sort of an educational thing right now where it's like, yeah, by the way, this is a thing. <sighs> Later on, like the traps usually don't do really anything. There's even traps that heal. What? So it's like, oh, by the way, hey, look at you for exploring. We're going to reward you with this healing trap. It's strange. <laughs> it's it's that was probably the designers being like, "Well, we have this mechanic. What else can we do yeah, with it?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> Here uh, comes one of the Parliament's watchdogs. You go back in silence. His yapping. An agent of the VKP. You can follow orders, can you not? The VKP is your enemy. <laughs> now go. <laughs> well, they're gonna die. <laughs> See? They just want you to know how creepy Sydney is. Is he just, like, appearing places and being like, Ooh, uh, Boogeyman. <laughs> I hope that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even saying anything. He's just appearing. And it's because he's all spooky-like. I still don't understand what that weird, like, gray child-looking thing was that appeared in that last cutscene. That is to be explained. Uh, but... It's Why? part story. Like they're not gonna get to it yet. You see a person. Was that the kid that was re like stolen from us? It was yeah. not. Well, see, normally I would be changing my other weapon to fight humans, and then I'd be focusing this other one on beasts. But I guess I don't care today because <laughs> I screwed up that one. I was like, whatever. I'm because just... optimized oh, game. There play. you are. Ah, you have a bow. Uh, Is okay. there? Is there, like, a quick way to change your weapon? There is not. And that is the most frustrating thing about this game. Mm, I'm sorry, that's a sore point. point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, why, that's... I, that's probably why I'm, like, even, like, I don't care. I'm switching my weapon. But, see, no, that's, I think that's I really important to, to talk every about. every single time, go back to the equip screen, go to this. So oh, it's, it's even worse when you equip a two-handed weapon, because then when you go back to changing to a one-handed weapon, you have to re-equip your shield as well. So that's, that's critical, right? Because, like, this is obviously a core element of the game. They mm -hmm. want you to use different weapons and, and train them for specific enemy types. Precisely. Um, so not having a way to, like, toggle between at least one or two different weapons is kind of a huge deal. Did you ever play the original Devil May Cry? Yeah. Dude, that was actually the one that I played before the one we played on the show, which was oh, four. I don't know. That game was awful. It was bad. I, I, I've but I liked Devil May Cry one, the first one. I, yeah, I really it was, did. It was a fun game. Um, so the first one, they had no way to quick switch between weapons. So if you wanted to change guns, you're just kind of like get all of your menu and do it. Mm -hmm. It's a pain in the ass. And then uh, the second one, I think, is when they started introducing quick switches. <laughs> they they learned from their mistakes. <laughs> um, cutscene. Oh, okay. 
So there's there's a decent amount of like just like short little cutscenes like this that work mostly in their favor. Hmm. So usually they do a lot of boss intros when bosses come up. It's pretty cool. So when the screen stops, you know something big's happening, which I mean should be the case. And look at what happened. This oh, was a clear man. hallway. I do not feel welcome here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you are not. Ah. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> bad. So, how would you fix that problem of, of the weapon switching? Would you just set something up so that you could say, like, I want to be able to toggle between these two and then have one button that will toggle your weapon? Well, <laughs> are there really any free buttons to do that with? That's See, that's the kind of thing is... Uh, so, there's this menu. Um, when you pull up L2, you're able to do a, a quick mechanic mm -hmm. where you can be like, all right, quick, uh, I can you can... Uh, cast spells are for all the um the the symbols that try yeah all the buttons and then uh, left the the tog or the um D pad is for allows like you to switch items yeah uh, change your chain abilities things like that hmm. so under they could have done it in here and that would have been fine also R two does nothing so the answer is yes there there is a thing a so R two probably would have been the logical choice yes in fact that's probably what a lot of games that learned from mistakes like that probably did. It's either that or like, like every time e or that. whatever. So there's a, an exploit circle. in this game that when they, you're if they can't hit you and you can hit them. Definitely. I'm like, you actually think you can't hit me from right here unless I back up. But normally mm. so all right, this is just stupid AI. But a lot of times so right then he was jumping, right? Mm -hmm. When they're jumping, when you're jumping, you cannot attack. So what you can ah. do is get up to a high area, and when the opponent jumps after you, you'll be able to hit them like four times before they finally hit the ground and can strike back. Wow. So you can exploit the hell out of that. Hitting wolf in spine. There and you go. It's, it's one of those things, too, that, like, I don't know if they could have really done much to resolve that other than, like, maybe allowing the one hit to go off and then not allowing another hit until they've landed. Um, but I feel like that's the additional programming that they just might not have had the budget for. They probably should have worked on making it a little more um, turn, I guess, turn-based rather than time-based. Um, yeah, that's fair. And then that probably would have really solved the scenario. But then again, I didn't. I wouldn't want to make it a tactical movement game, just like. Yeah, and I bet you anything that's one of those things where they realized they probably realized that, right? Like. There's almost little doubt in my mind that that's something that the designers didn't talk about at some point. But I bet you the problem was that by the time they realized it, most of the game's architecture was already in place. So they'd have to rewrite some a, a decent portion of the core mechanics to make that work. And at that point, they just had to out there. They just had to be like, you know what? some point, you have to cut your losses. Yeah. And and I'm sure, like, yeah, even though it's an exploit, oh. right? Um, I I imagine the game is still moderately difficult because you can't use that exploit everywhere. Ugh. I mean, hopefully, most of right? the time, no, you cannot. So they they were probably really selective where they had those like differences in in um, elevation, I guess, that would allow for that exploit to, to take be taken and it advantage. Definitely of. does appear more early on than it does later. So they, they <laughs> I might bet have... you they started building those levels early yeah. on. And... <laughs> They were like, maybe we should do this less after they did some focus testing. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, so you're seeing a lot of crates and stuff right now. I think this is the first time that we actually come across our first puzzle. Hmm. Um, which I do exist in this game. Puzzles. Yeah, there's there's uh, some questionable mechanics that I'm <laughs> excited to talk about at some point. Because I wonder why... <laughs> Uh, so, like, you know, it's it's fine having puzzles to switch things up and stuff like that. Um, but, like, this is an RPG, not a Zelda game, you know? It Precisely. Like, that's not really holding me back. It's not like I, I like, yeah, I got to understand where you at. I mean, do you, gotcha. do you think that the puzzle, like, say that puzzle, um, obviously it didn't really slow you down. And it was sort of the introduction of, like, hey, there will be puzzles in this game. They're going to get more complicated. <laughs> Yeah, but you guys still still solve this one. Some so of them you get, the get idea. some of them get a little frustrating. Uh, I mean, what, as puzzles are, you know, they they do. So, do you think that it takes away more from the experience than it gives the experience? There's something holding this door shut. Um, honestly, I feel like it takes away. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, so then the follow-up question is, oh, what could uh, we have done differently instead to... That or even, like, why do you think that it does? Um, I mean, I think the obvious answer would be, like, because it doesn't really fit theme. But I, I think it probably goes honest, deeper than that. You You would know better than me. It's okay. You know where it really all stems from? You ready to see the thing the thing in this game that gives me more stress than anything? Ooh. See it? The lack of ability to save? Nope. Or the playtime? The playtime. Watch it. It goes it's, up. It just it's a nerve wracking clock. <laughs> they did that on purpose. Watch how fast it goes. Like that's why, that's why they include milliseconds. Thing. That's why because they want now there are rankings. For beating the game in a certain amount of time. Really? There, like there's an internal leaderboard there in this game? There is an internal leaderboard. In fact, it's called the score. What? There is a score with What? Like, you can, you can what? get a title and you can change the title, I guess. I haven't got anything like that. There's this thing telling you scores, rooms completed, uh, and what time you have done that, how many of certain things you have killed, and this all contributes to your score at the top. I mean, I guess this is great for like it's, it has a good speedrunners and or maybe competitive players. I don't know if this game ever hit a competitive level, but I don't know what they were thinking with it. Why did they include it? I mean, it is, could is the question. It could be as simple as like, well, I mean, we could spend a day and make these. Is possibly? I feel like a lot of time went into this though, because if you're really calc, if you're taking all these all the variables that of course. The game can already track rather easily. They, yeah, they probably built it into like but each they, of those. Each one of these things has a score associated with it. So yeah. like, hmm. you know, I, I feel like if I get more kills with the dragon, then I'm going to have more points than if I had get kills with a human. I mean, And we... like how many weapons have I used and then et cetera, et cetera. They actually keep track of this stuff and give you score based off that. I mean, to be fair, we even talked about keeping track of those things when we were making Kobold Conquest. And we yeah. were like, should we track, you know, how many times the player kills these things or, like, how long they spend doing but this But we were thing? planning on doing something with it besides just score. That's true. So I think that's the thing that gets me. This is Maybe an just... RPG based off a story, and, yeah, it can get a little, like, just that the hmm. fact that this time... Now, I don't care, right? I'm not competing with myself to beat the game in a certain amount of time. I'm really just trying to enjoy the game and play it. Mm -hmm. But that is still... Like every time, there were still times that I'm like, you know, I didn't really do too much. I'm just gonna <laughs> load to this last point because I've been sitting on the screen for an hour. Oh, yeah, it's actually a little strange that they don't stop the clock when you're in the pause menu. Nothing stops the clock. Nothing. Hmm. Even I can even go. Oh yeah, there's this thing. Too. <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool, actually. It, it can be helpful occasionally, but most of the time it's it's weird. But yeah, yeah, it's more can. for flair than anything. But it's, uh, it's actually, it's really cool because at one point I accidentally went to the screen. I looked up and was like, oh my God, this whole time I've been thinking I was in a dungeon, but there's been no ceiling. There is a point <laughs> like very, not too far from here where you, there's no ceiling. You're, you're outside technically. <laughs> oh man. So there's a questionable uh, design decisions in this game that I feel do take away. Yeah, no joke. So. Well, that's, that's all we have for this episode. Um... Do you want to talk about the score system or even like Let's these? Let's talk about these... the score system. We could talk more about the puzzles later, probably next one, because okay. I'm about to have to complete a puzzle. So. Okay, yeah, we'll save that for next time. So what do you guys think about the score system or even like some of these other like mechanics that don't really seem to have a place? I yeah. Mean, the, the score or time or, you know, even first person view, but we'll, we'll keep it on the score for now. I think that's just good. Just what do you think of that? Yeah. Why would you, would you do it? Why, what could a uh, benefit could you see out of it? And, and why do you think they did it? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's it. Be sure to vote for what you want to see. Do the thing. If you don't do the thing, then we don't do the thing, and nobody's then doing anything. we don't anything. know what to play if you don't do the thing. Oh, shut up. It's true, though. Uh, bye. Bye.